two, one. So factoring and polynomials. This is a topic which is in grade 10 math that you're gonna run into. Some people may run into it in grade nine, maybe even earlier. Let's go through it. Factoring is something that you had in elementary school 100% at some point, you may not necessarily remember it. And one of those key factoring thing was prime factoring or prime factorization, where you broke down basically a whole number into primes. Now, if you forgot how to do that, I'll put a link up above. I think it's worthy to remember that prime factorization. Another concept which is related to factoring is the distributive property when you have various polynomials and you try to distribute across. Now, that distributive property you again should have covered. I'll put a link to the distributive property up above there. If you know those two, you're gonna be pretty good to go with this factoring and polynomials. Here is an example, and I'll give you a few examples to try to explain this factoring. This example has two terms. Now, the first term is just 3x. Now, we remember that the x is the y or the a, the b, the r, any letter or symbol that you use is basically some variable that we do not know what it is at the moment. It could be an expression. It could be a particular number. We don't know. Now, in here with these two terms, if you wanted to use factoring, what you would do is you would try to first take your coefficients and try to see if the coefficients have anything in common. Now, when I'm referring to the coefficient, I am referring to the actual number, which is typically in front of a particular term. Now, three and four don't really have anything in common. I mean, they, they do have a factor of one in common, but if you factor out one, then they won't change the three and the four in any way. Now, the other ones, so notice you have an X and you have a Y. Now, the Y is only in the second term, but the X is in both terms, which means that this particular factor, this X that we have, is common to both terms, which we can basically factor out. So that's what we use factoring for if we want to simplify the terms that we carry out. It is kind of the reverse of distributive property. If I factor out the x, so if I take this x out and this x out, and I'm going to now check, okay, so what is remaining? Well, the only thing remaining in the first term is just the 3, and in the second term I have remaining 4y. So for this example, the x is the common factor between the two terms that I have, and it turns out to be the greatest common factor. It is the only thing that I can really take out from both that they share in between the two. I cannot take out a three, I cannot take out any number, I cannot take out the y because the first term doesn't have a y. This would have been the factor form of exactly the same thing, so these are equivalent to each other, they basically are equal, and you can check that because you can use the distributive property, you can distribute this across both of the two terms, and you will get the 3x plus 4xy back. Now this is just an introduction. Now of course it gets a little bit harder. Let's take a look at some more examples, but hopefully it gives you a sense of what this factoring means. You take a factor, something which is in common, and you start to extract it from a term. I have provided here four different examples. The first one is relatively simple, very similar to the one that we just did. Let's start with that one. If you are going to factor this particular expression, and this expression 3xy minus 6x squared, again, the first thing you try to do is you wanna to try to see what coefficients, so in this case, the three and the six, what do those two have in common? What's the biggest number I can take out? Which means, what is the greatest common factor between three and six that I can take out? It turns out that I can take out the three entirely from both. I can take it out from here and from here because it's common to both. Six, remember, is just two times three. I will take out that three right out. Now, now I will go through every single variable and to see, okay, what is the maximum okay, numbers that I can take out? What is the maximum 
variables that I can extract. I have an x and I have an x squared, which means in the second term I have two x's. And in the first term I only have one x. Well, if one term has two and the other one has one, the maximum I can take out is one of them. I'm going to take out the x from both of the terms. So this x and one of these x's is now gone. That now remains with the y. But there is no y in the second term. And therefore, I cannot factor that y out. It will just remain there. What is remaining? Well, in the first term, the only thing that will remain, as I took out the 3, I took out the x, I basically extracted it right out. That means that the y is the only thing that is remaining. In the second term, I have, now, I took out a 3 out of a 6, which means that a 2 remains. Because remember that a 6 is just equal to 2 times 3, and one and these 3s, one of them, I am taking it out. The x, I took one of those x's out, which means that 1x still remains. And therefore, this would have been the factored form of this particular polynomial. In this case, it's a binomial because it has two terms. And again, you can check because you can distribute the 3x into the y and 3x into the 2x. And you will see that you're going to get exactly what you started with back. Now, the greatest common factor for these two terms was actually 3x. That is the biggest thing that I could take out. Let's take a look at the second example. Now, I want to kind of lay off these x's and y's because, you know, in high school, you typically get so used to just using these x's and y's, but x's and y are just variables that are expressing something that we don't know. It could be a number, it could be an expression, something. But they don't have to be x and they don't have to be y. And here I notice I have a's and b's. Now in this example, what I have is I will have three terms and I'm going to try to find what the greatest common factor is that I can take out from all of it. Well, first, if I look at the actual coefficients, so notice I have negative two, I have a eight, I have a negative four. If I take out, well, the greatest common factor between two, eight and four is two, I can take out the two right out. So that is now taken out. Now I'm going to go through every single variable and try to see. All right, so I have an A. Well, I have two A's in the first term. I have three A's in the second, and then only one A in the last, which means I can only take the minimum amount, which is just a single A. That A is going to be factored out from here, from here, and from here, because it is common. And now moving on to the B, Notice that I have a b in all terms, which means that I can take out, and in this case, how many b's? Well, I can only take out one b, because the first term and the last term only have one b in it. The second term has two, which is fine, but in terms of factoring, I'm only going to be allowed to take out one of them. Now, what does this mean? Well, this means that I have, in the first term, I will have negative will still remain there. One of the a's will remain there, but there will be no b, which means this is going to be negative a, b. That's the only thing remaining in that first term. In the second term, I'm going to bring this down here. Second term, what I have remaining is, well, I took out a 2. Well, what is remaining? If I take the 2 out of the 8, that means the 4 is going to be remaining because 8 is just 2 times 4. I took out 1a, which means that I have 2a's still remaining, and I took out 1b, which means I have 1b still remaining. Now, the last term, I have a negative 2. Again, remember, I took out the 2, and then I took out the a and the b, so there is nothing else left there. All right? So that would have been the factored form of this. Now, sometimes what people do is, they will take out a negative out of each term. And what I want to show you here is notice that you have a negative here, you have a positive and then a negative. If you do not want to have a negative in this case, for example, if I don't want to have this negative, remember that negative is really just negative one, 
which means I can take this and factor the negative out as well, if I wanted to. This will depend on your teachers or it depends on the application you're doing, but you should be comfortable with taking out a sign if you don't want it. Which means that this negative, if I took it out, so this is gonna be negative two instead of just two, this is AB, what is remaining there? Well, the AB will remain, it will no longer be negative, it's gonna be now positive. But because you're taking it out and you're factoring it, that means you're factoring it from every single term. Don't forget, if you take out this negative right here, it's going to be taken out from here, from here, and from here. Now you will say, well, but this is a positive. That's okay. The positive is gonna turn into a negative because if you take out a negative out, now remember from the distributive property, if you ever wanted to bring this back, a negative times a negative is a positive. When you're taking out a sign, it will, and a sign which means a negative, that means the sign will just change. That term will stay the same, which means that we're still gonna have 4a squared b, but now notice that it is negative instead of positive because you took out the negative. And lastly, the last term is gonna be positive two instead of negative. You can take out negatives from these polynomials or from anything for that matter, if you want it to. But if you take it out from the first term, don't forget to take it out from all the terms because that's how factoring works. And this comes from the realization that we do have these brackets here. And the brackets means that the whole 2AB, which is in front, is applying to the whole bracket. All right, so that's another example. There's two more examples. This one seems a little bit harder, and I wanna talk about this one because it is useful. Oftentimes when you're dealing with these polynomials, you don't really run into these factors that are in brackets. And here we do have factors in brackets. That can happen. Now, if you are factoring this out and you consider that Z plus three or Z plus three inside of the bracket, now notice, I mean, I can rewrite this and I will, because I am noticing that we have z plus 3 minus, this is a, b, this 3 plus z, don't let that trip you up because this is still z plus 3 squared. You know, I like to put the variables in the, in, the, in, the, in the front. Now, how do I factor this? Well, there is no technically no coefficients here, right? So there's no number to factor out, but I do have a lot of variables. The variable a, I can factor out from both terms. The a can come out. Now I have an x in the first term, but I have no x's in the second term. That x is gonna just stay and remain there. And now I have this, this is now funny because what I have is I have a bracket. That bracket is a factor. And that factor acts as one factor altogether. That bracket acts as one factor. And if you have that, notice that I have z plus 3 common to both of the terms. Now, the first term has z plus 3 in brackets. The second term, it is squared, which means I can only take out one of them. That I'm going to take out, so z plus 3, this is going to be taken out from the first term. Now, what, it rem what remains? I'm going to put the square brackets here just so that it distinguishes between. What remains is only an x from the first term. This one I haven't factored out. Minus, the b was factored out, sorry, the a was factored out, but the b remains, so the b stays there. And lastly, so this is z plus three. Now it's no longer squared because I took one of them out. And then I can just close the bracket. This is the factored form. This right here is my greatest common factor to both of these terms, but notice it's a little bit trickier now because I have taken out a bracket altogether. That's what we would do in this situation. And that would finish that example. Here's the last example that I have for you. 
With this example, I wanted to bring this about because you've noticed that you have brackets. And commonly what happens here with students, if they were supposed to factor this out. Now, the three, the coefficients, okay, so the number, which is in front of the term, we have two terms here. I can't take out because there's nothing to take out in terms of numbers from the second term. The x I can take out, so that I can factor out. That will be taken out from here, and it will be taken out from here, which is great. Now, the y, you will say, oh, well, I have a y, but I also have a y here. Can I take it out? Unfortunately, in this case, you cannot take the y out because this y that you have there from this second term, that y is actually minus 1, and notice that it is inside of the brackets. If it is inside of the brackets, and that means that the whole bracket is a factor. You cannot take out the y, and it is not common to both. Although you do see the y right here, and you'll see the y right here. But that y, that second y right here, is inside of the bracket. So you have to be very careful. If it was alone, if it was just y and not y minus 1, then we can take it out. But because it belongs to the bracket and there is a minus 1, we can no longer take it out. Here, therefore, what that means, that my factored form would have been, so this is 3, y remains, plus, now one of the x's still remains, and y minus 1 is stuck there. Now again, by the distributive property, you can bring back the x to check if it is what you get. Now, is there anything else in common that I can take out from those two terms inside of the bracket? There is not, unfortunately. This is as far as we could go for this particular example. All right, so I hope that you found this useful. So factoring isn't that difficult. However, you do have to see a few examples to start getting used to what you can and what you cannot factor out. Thanks for watching. See you in a future video. Bye, everybody.